Constitution is the law of the land. And sometimes people in power find it inconvenient. So here are five ways they try to get around the Constitution. Welcome to America Uncovered, I'm Chris Chappell. In the United States, the Constitution is the law of the land. It sets the rules for how the government operates. And it also sets up a lot of restrictions, telling the government what it cannot do. The Founding Fathers wrote it that way to prevent the U.S. government from ever having the kind of unchecked power of the British monarchy. The Constitution can be amended, but it's not easy. You can't just add post-it notes. I've tried. Changing it requires support from two-thirds of Congress, plus three-quarters of the states. And I'm not sure we're going to get that many people to agree on anything right now. The last amendment to the Constitution was 30 years ago, meaning we've had six Batmen since we've had a new amendment. But sometimes people in power don't like the Constitution getting in the way of their agendas. So what does the government do if it wants to accomplish something that isn't, strictly speaking, constitutional? Well, that's exactly what they're trying to figure out. Here are five ways that the government gets around the Constitution. Number one, cause of action laws. Cause of action is a legal term that describes whether a person is eligible to bring a lawsuit. For example, let's say you're walking down the sidewalk and a worker drops paint on your head. Depending on local law, you might have a cause of action to sue the worker because he dropped the paint on your head, causing damage, even if he improved your outfit by giving it a Jackson Pollock vibe. However, the woman across the street pointing and laughing doesn't have a cause of action to sue the worker because the worker didn't drop paint on her. Normally, to have a cause of action, you have to be the person who suffered the injury. But some states are getting around this with what are called cause of action laws. The point is to enforce things that otherwise wouldn't be constitutional. Earlier this year, before Roe v. Wade was overturned, two red states passed laws allowing citizens to sue other citizens for aiding and abetting an illegal abortion. The most famous of these is the Texas Heartbeat Law. It was passed in May. Oklahoma passed a similar law soon afterwards. These laws allow citizens to enforce the abortion law on each other even when the person suing is not directly affected. Some experts are calling this part of a wave of red state laws encouraging vigilantes. Why would someone sue over someone else's abortion? Maybe because they feel it's the morally right thing to do. Or maybe because of the $10,000 cash incentive. You know what they say, snitches get riches. And now the blue state of California has caught on. That state is working on a cause of action law that would allow citizens to sue each other for having illegal guns. They would be awarded at least $10,000 in civil damages for each weapon, plus attorney's fees. Attorneys will take these cases because it's the morally right thing to do. And after the break, lots more ways the government is trying to weasel around the Constitution. Welcome back. There are lots more ways to skirt the Constitution. Like number two, employer vaccine mandates. In 2021, President Biden really, really wanted Americans to get the COVID vaccine. After all, it had been one of his campaign promises. Our plan starts with mounting an aggressive, safe and effective vaccination campaign to meet our goal of administering 100 million shots in our first 100 days in office. He actually met that goal with time to spare, so he moved the goalposts, and then met that goal too. But it still wasn't enough for Biden. There just weren't enough shots getting into arms. He couldn't legally require Americans to get the COVID vaccine. That would violate the Constitution. So instead, he declared it a matter of public health to protect workers and had OSHA mandated instead. OSHA is the government's workplace safety group. With OSHA enforcing it, it wasn't like the government was arresting people for not getting vaccinated. It was the government telling employers they had to fire people not getting vaccinated. Eventually, this OSHA mandate was blocked by the Supreme Court. They declared it an overreach of authority for a government agency. But most employers implemented a vaccine mandate anyway. Because anyone who'd force you to work a 12-hour shift on Saturday obviously doesn't care about your rights. 
And anyway, by the time the court overruled it, a lot of people had already been pressured into getting the vaccine. So I guess Biden got what he wanted in the end. Number three, mandated bank reporting. The Fourth Amendment gives citizens protection against unreasonable searches and seizures. But the Constitution's protections hinge on the definition of unreasonable. Most people agree that it is unreasonable for the government to go snooping around in your house without a search warrant. Most people would also agree it's unreasonable for the government to spy on what you're looking at on the internet. Not that that stopped them. And most people would agree that it's unreasonable for the government to go snooping around in your private bank account. But what if the bank reports information about your private bank account to the government? Well, that's different, right? Sure would seem so. Thanks to the ironically named Bank Security Act of 1970, banks are required to report to the IRS whenever cash transactions adding up to $10,000 occur in a bank account in a single day. In theory, this is to prevent money laundering. In practice, it means the IRS has been spying on a lot of innocent citizens' large transactions for decades. And then in 2021, Congress proposed the American Families Plan, which was part of Biden's Build Back Better agenda. It included a proposal that banks would have to report to the IRS any account with transactions of $600 or more in a calendar year. In other words, just about every bank account in America, except philosophy majors. In theory, the point was to catch tax cheats. But banks, businesses, and plenty of everyday Joes pushed back, especially since there were concerns that the plan could violate the Fourth Amendment. There was so much pushback, they ended up changing the amount from $600 to $10,000, aka philosophy majors' yearly income. Still, the plan was opposed by many Republicans and didn't pass through Congress. But the government loves surveillance, so I'm sure they'll keep trying. And after the break, how much power do elected officials have to force companies to do their unconstitutional bidding? Welcome back. Number four. Authoritative requests. A tip for elected officials, when all else fails, just try threatening people to do what you want. In 2021, U.S. Senator Elizabeth Warren decided to try. Senators do not have the power to control what bookstores sell. That should be obvious. Yet, Senator Warren sent a letter to Amazon asking CEO Andy Jassy to explain why the company's algorithms recommended books with COVID misinformation. I say that she asked Jassy to explain, and that is the word she used in the letter, but the tone did not sound much like asking. It's like when a guy in a dark alleyway holds a knife and asks to see your wallet. Warren wrote in the letter, given the seriousness of this issue, I ask that you perform an immediate review of Amazon's algorithms and within 14 days provide both a public report on the extent to which Amazon's algorithms are directing consumers to books and other products containing COVID-19 misinformation and a plan to modify these algorithms so that they no longer do so. Books with COVID-19 misinformation? I'm less worried about Amazon selling that and more worried about them selling this actual Thanos onesie swimsuit for men. The bigger question is why would Amazon recommend this to me? They should know I only wear normal swim trunks, like this. Anyway, Senator Warren also admonished Amazon for refusing to address an earlier letter she'd sent. She called this pattern and practice of misbehavior, an unethical, unacceptable, and potentially unlawful course of action from one of the nation's largest retailers. Is it just me or is there a threat of legal action hidden in there? But you know, she's a prominent senator. She can send threatening letters and people just have to do what she says, right? Yeah, not so much. She got sued. It turns out, senator or not, trying to directly tell booksellers what they can and cannot sell is potentially a violation of the First Amendment. And she did it in the most Karen way possible. Although I don't fully blame her for it. Because I would also like to speak to Amazon's algorithm manager about certain recommendations I've been getting. And finally, number five online data purchases. American citizens have the right to privacy. That means the government can't go sniffing around in our business without some kind of warrant based on probable cause. But private companies? They don't have those kinds of restrictions. They collect all kinds of data on American citizens, especially digital data, because we check a box that gives them permission. And all the government has to do is buy that data. What kind of government agencies are buying it? 
Well, the IRS, the CDC, and loads of others, including the DEA, the FBI, Homeland Security, and the Department of Defense. All of them are buying citizens' cell phone location data and more. After all, if the government isn't the one doing the monitoring, it's not illegal or unconstitutional, right? The government is just purchasing the data from a third party. Because paying for someone to do something that would be illegal for you to do it is totally legit. That's why nobody has a problem with hitmen. Now, there are laws other than just the Constitution that protects people's electronic records, such as the Electronic Communications Privacy Act of 1986. But these laws often haven't kept up with technology, which is why in 2021, Senator Ron Wyden and Senator Rand Paul introduced a law to stop the government from buying private data about citizens from data brokers. So far, though, it's still working its way through Congress. And if there's anything Congress is known for, it's quickly passing laws to limit their own power. So what do you think? Have you seen any other ways that the government tries to get around the Constitution? Let us know in the comments below. And we could not make this show without support from viewers like you. You can help us for as little as a dollar per episode at patreon.com slash America Uncovered. Or join our exclusive censorship-free social media platform, americauncovered.locals.com. The links to both are in the description below. Once again, I'm Chris Chappell. Thanks for watching America Uncovered.